GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. This is the Listen In Podcast with your hosts, John Cimino and Brandon Gorell, here on the Gear Radio Network. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, Brandon's here. Look at this. It is It is whether or not you are listening on the JC Money Show feed or the Listen In, the podcast feed. I still have that active. But it's us. It is us. The Listen In Fresh out the joint. Here. Fresh out the joint, rocking his life rip shirt right over here to my right, Mr. Brandon Gorell. I am John Cimino, and I am JC Money on Twitter. And welcome to the podcast this week, my babies. The first time, long time in yeah. general with the two of us on the podcast, but in person. Yeah. Because I think the last time we did this, it was on the um, on the Zoom. I don't yeah, know. I think so because uh, we were supposed to do it in person, and then we were just both like, "You know, I'm fucking tired." Uh, indeed, indeed. The, the the over forty hit us, and they're like, uh, <laughs> "I don't feel like going anywhere." As a press recording right now, it is uh, we. It's eight thirty seven on a Thursday night. We've got Thursday night yeah. football going on. The only person right now that's <laughs> it, that's active on the television screen right now that's older than us is Tom Brady. Yeah. I mean, besides the coaching staff. Well, yeah, but I mean, active like in football. I'm well, sure the refs are like, probably older too. Yeah, there's probably some guys over on the sideline that are about to get run over at some point tonight too. Maybe that are uh, in their in their fifties and sixties. It could be, could be. My man, how in the hell are you? Uh, well, uh, welcome again, everybody, to the podcast. But uh, Brandon, man, how the hell are you? How the how was your uh, how was your summer? It's good, man. I it was a pretty fast summer. It kind of sucked. Yeah, it went by too quick. Uh, had a lot of stuff to do. You know, did our camp trip. If, uh, you didn't break anything this time. No, nope, I couldn't. I, I mean, um, broke my. I almost broke my goddamn ankle in in June. Yeah, yeah. But... yeah. So you know, successful trip again this year. We didn't get any rain for the first time ever. I think. Right. Right. Um, you know, I did a trip with my kids this year. Took like a proper vacation. Normally I take vacation and I like maybe go somewhere on a weekend and then spend the whole week doing some stupid ass project at my house um, and wasting a bunch of time and then getting exhausted by the end of it and going, man, I can't wait to go back to work so I can relax. (laughs) Um, So yeah, it, you know, and then before I knew it, it was like, what are all these fucking leaves doing on the ground? Like it's already fall. It's already cold. Mm -hmm. It's like 45 today was the high. Yep. Took my dog out to go to the bathroom this morning at like six thirty, and I'm like, Jesus, it's frost on the grass right now. He's taking a shit and it's steaming. <laughs> no, that was later in the day. Oh, okay. okay. He just pissed everywhere because you know that's what he does. <laughs> that's what that's what um, he does. But yeah, it's you know, and then we're into football, and my team sucks this year. Yeah, <laughs> and my and for right now at the start, mine doesn't, and that's really weird. It's yeah. a very odd. It, it's it's very odd to to it's like think bizarre that. world. Right, because last we talked on the podcast, uh, the Listen In podcast, uh, channeling our old football talk weekly days, the Jets were terrible, and I would bitch about them every yeah. single freaking week, and throughout the entire duration. First, first snap of the game, they don't want it. Yeah, no, well, that was before. That was when they were actually <laughs> on again, off again playoff. You know, they'd yeah. make the playoffs one year, and then they'd miss the next year. And then I'd bitch about it, and then they make the playoffs the next year. They and now I'd kill for that because I haven't had it in right? goddamn eleven years now. Yeah. But you get greedy. They're five and two. Yeah, they're getting greedy. Buffalo, you, you guys, you guys are on the clock with that right now. Y'all are getting a little too greedy. I get it because I hope I hope co-host. It's exciting the, times for them. Yeah, it is. It is, and I I co-host with uh, with but Ryan you gotta, still. You gotta temper them expectations though, because but it leads to real. Bad pain later if you don't right come right thirteen seconds last year prime <laughs> example of that I'm telling you, you and know. you ain't heard the last from Patty oh no no uh, not at all not at all they looked real good last week against the Forty ers right I will say that indeed uh, speaking of sports Brandon yeah sports we that's where that's is. that's the origin of the of this particular podcast is is, is, is is the sports and the sports talk and and all that stuff and i did not write every anything down here but you had mentioned um your your team not doing very well and 
the the big I think the thing that I, I I've seen a lot of is is this it for Aaron Rodgers? Is this <laughs> it for Tom Brady? Because yeah. both of the two of them obviously goats and 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 Hall of Famers and all that. Yeah, but they're ha- both having historically down seasons team team wise. Yeah. And a lot of people are saying they should have retired, or, or it was Kurt Warner the other day. He said um, that some days, you know, it's just it, it's okay to realize that your body doesn't want it anymore, and that you're not as sharp as you used to be, and it might be time to think about think about the end. Re- referencing those two, it, not in those exact words, but that was the context yeah, of it. Yeah, I saw that. So you being you being the resident Packers yeah. fan, I have to ask you. What is what is your feeling? You and the Packers group that you're in, things like that. What is going on around Aaron Rodgers' land? Uh, it's frustration mostly. I don't think it's age catching up to Aaron. Uh, I, I look at Tom and I watch Tom and his body language and kind of how Tom's just reacting to hits now because he didn't usually get hit very much. Mm-hmm. But his line's a little bit shaky this year. He's lost some pieces to it. Um that he doesn't have the security that he usually does, and he doesn't like getting hit in the first place. He's got hit a lot this year, and I think that's been tougher for him. Um, so he hasn't quite looked himself. But, like, Aaron's case is he's just more pissed off and frustrated because he knows they have a good game plan. He knows they have talent there, but they're not executing. Um, so I think his is more frustration Um, I think he still loves to play the game. He doesn't have the personal stuff going on that Tom does. Um, he's also doesn't have the age that Tom does. Um, you know, the skills are still there. The Mm. frustrating part is, is that to the layman's eye, if you're just watching on TV, it looks like, oh, Aaron missed that throw or Aaron threw to like nobody. The reason a lot of that's happening is because guys are not running routes the correct way. They're not snapping off. They're not sharp. And so he's throwing balls to where he expects people to be, and those people are not there. Sometimes, right. in some cases, not even close. Right, right, right. Um, some plays are just a hair off. Um, he threw a dart to uh, Amari Rogers that was just off his fingertips. He had to dive for it. Amari Rogers is a shorter guy. It goes to a taller receiver. He makes that catch. Um but again, they're banged up. Lazar didn't play. Christian Watson was their top, you know, wide receiver pick. He didn't play for the second straight game because of a hamstring. Randall Cobb went down the game before with an ankle injury. He's on IR. So you know, we got Sammy Watkins back this week, but he former like Buffalo Bill Sammy hasn't, Watkins, who hasn't played in like four weeks either because mm-hmm. he has injured too with a hamstring issue. Um, he didn't look right, and including on that last play when they were going to get the first down, they needed one yard, which, again, puzzling to me why they aren't just running it, because mm-hmm. they have two great backs back there. You can get a yard, um, but they're going with these quick slant passes to the wide receiver. Well, the reason Dobbs gets hit when the ball just gets there is because, again, mental errors. Right. Sammy Watkins is supposed to be blocking that outside guy, but instead, he blows by him like he's running a route and then is like seven yards down the field wide open and then realizes, oh, shit, I was supposed to be blocking there and the play's over and we lost the ball and the game's over now. Mm. So those kind of things are happening frequently uh-huh. and it's getting frustrating for him because he's like, hey, we practice this shit all week. Right. We come in with a good game plan. If we execute and we do what we're supposed to do, we're going to be successful and this year, it seems like more than any year around the NFL, every game is like a one-score game. Yeah. So one or two plays missed could cost you a game now. It really can. There's a very small margin of error all around the league. I mean, when you're having teams like Jacksonville with you right, right, to yeah. the end yeah. when it's a one-score game, yeah. like you know Washington, they on paper you think, oh, Washington's terrible. But if you look at the losses that they had, right. they're all one-score losses, mm-hmm. and they lost to good teams. Right. It's not like they're out here losing to Jacksonville and losing to the Houston Texans. Can't even say the Jets this year. Yeah. Can't even say them this you, time. You can't. I mean, 
at least so for now. You see these teams, and you look in the NFC, and the NFC is very mild right now too. So mm-hmm. that's why like Brady and Rodgers can be like, "Listen, we're seven games in. We're not where we want to be, but we're no by no means out of it." Right. Because right. you have the Eagles kind of running away right now, but they, you know, they are good, but they're not somebody I would be like. Oh man, look out for the Eagles. They look amazing. Yeah. They don't because they look like at a couple of games that if they made that one mistake, then it would be game over and they would have had a loss. Right. right. First week, they almost blew that 27 point lead against the the Lions. And mm-hmm. They held on by a field goal. So I'll be curious the to see how many Eagles tight. how many Eagles fans especially newer ones yeah. jump off the bandwagon once. Yeah. Philadelphia inevitably I mean, starts Dallas. Philadelphia. You know, but Dallas was out there with house money and Cooper Rush, mm-hmm. um, which I thought was the most asinine few weeks of football commentary I've ever heard. Oh, should Dak Proscott be worried about his job? No, he shouldn't. Yeah. Because Cooper Rush isn't very good. Right. He makes a few timely throws, but if you had Dak all game, they probably have a lot more points than what they had to begin with. Right, right. They for beat sure. a Cincinnati team that was struggling to kind of gel. They were still on that hangover from the Super Bowl. Right. They beat a Washington team by three points. Right. Uh, you know, Dallas hasn't been very impressive either, but you look at their record and they're like, wow, wow. Same thing with the New York Giants. The Giants are yep. six and one. Every game that they've been in has been a one score game. Right. When I will one say. play goes there the, against them, they're an under 500 team. I will say with the Giants, what I do like about them. Um, and you can tell what Brian Dable ha- brings that you know Joe Judge didn't have is an understanding of what to do with a guy like Daniel Jones. The Daniel Jones is yeah. he's obviously he's he's obviously not you know a, a Tom Brady. Aaron he's no Rogers. Joe he's Flacco, no Josh Allen, or whatever. <laughs> but he's you know he's no Joe Flacco either. He's not elite. He's not. But elite, in man. the same. Having a coach like Dable, hey, who, Joe Flacco's who, one and one, one and two this year. Yes, he is. He's got a win. He does have a win. Big, big win under his belt. Yes, he was the start of the streak that yep. the, that the Jets are currently on right now. Yep. Um, but back to Daniel Jones, really quickly. It, it, you know, Dable has an eye for at least what to do with that type of quarterback. Yeah, and you can see as each game goes on the confidence in Eli's son and how well he's kind of performing. Yeah, you know, performing to the best of his abilities, whatever yeah. they may be. Yeah, it. They have a lot of next man up mentality too, because they are down a lot of players. They're a very unhealthy team right now, and they're still finding ways to win, which is good. Um, but as the season ticks on and the competition becomes a little stiffer, that's when you're going to really see what those teams are made of mm-hmm. and see if they rise or if they fall. I, I still feel like. Green Bay and Tampa and probably the Rams and 49ers will still be in the mix mm-hmm. come the end of this thing. It's not going to be four NFC East teams and, you know, two NFC West teams and one South and one North. Right. I think it's going to be the same. The same players are going to be in it, but there'll be a couple new faces. Philly was in it last year. They lost their first playoff game against the Bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, the Vikings would probably be the newest face, and then the Giants, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I still don't buy into the Vikings either. Like, I don't feel that they're a very good team either. Um, their record shows that they are, but if you watch their games, it's nothing really impressive about them. Nothing really pops, and you're like, wow, that team is dominant. Right, right, right. Um, you know, at least with Philadelphia, you look at it, and they're like, hey, their defense is flying right now. They're getting a lot of turnovers. They're getting a lot of quarterback pressure. Speaking of Eagles, they yeah. get advertised versus the Texans next week. Now I'm, I'm, I'm hoping tough game. I'm hoping I'm hoping that uh, the Eagles will break out the Kelly Greens. Yeah, in that, in that, I in hope next so. next week's game that would be pretty cool. I wish they'd take a cue from the NHL because the NHL is bringing back all these retro jerseys too for their I, alternates. I saw that. I saw the the Flames retro alternate. Yeah, did you see the uh, Pens one too? I right? did not. Oh, I just ordered one. Did you? Yeah, it's. Uh, I ordered one. I pre-ordered. It should be here in a couple of weeks, actually. All right. Well, while you search that, I, back to Aaron Rodgers really quickly because I did. I did think of something before we veered off of topic and talked about Daniel Jones. Um, where are you on the whole? Well, Aaron Rodgers didn't attend training camp. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's the I like yeah, Robo I like Penguin that. from the nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, where are you on the Aaron Rodgers didn't attend training camp or, it's or all preseason, horseshit. all that stuff? It's all just media bullshit. Again, like him spending a couple of weeks over at camp is not going to make Christian Watson catch that perfect 75-yard touchdown pass on the first play from scrimmage go right off of his goddamn hands. Right. Like, you got to make a play. That has nothing to do with Aaron Rodgers being there. He is... He has done everything that he needed to do. He never plays in the preseason. He hasn't been to camp in years. Mm-hmm. He shows up when it's time to work. Right. Preseason camp, rookie camp, that's for rookies and stuff to kind of get the know. Hey, these are the expectations when you come here. And he's in contact with all these guys. He's talked to all these guys. He mm-hmm. tells them what he's looking for. They go over the playbook and they're like, hey, this is what I'm looking for from you guys. This is what I, you know, I expect on these plays. What do you, you know, see on this read or what do you see on this film? You know, he did that stuff. He doesn't have to be there holding people's hands. And I think that it's it's very easy to go out when things aren't working right and criticize the process, but the process has been the process. Um and this is the same process that they've been pretty much doing every year in the last, you know, since Matt LaFleur has been here. Mm-hmm. And with Matt LaFleur being here, they've won 13 games every season. So right. You know, it's not, it's not something that's like, oh well, we had a couple of rookies in here because Devonte Adams is gone, mm-hmm. and and Marquez Valdez Gantling is gone. Great, but you should be able to read a playbook. You go through the reps in rookie camp because there's no contact or anything. You're right. just throwing balls around. Right. You're wearing shorts. Right. Like it's not a huge deal, but when things go south. People like Rex Ryan and Chris Canty and all these other knuckleheads on ESPN yep. need something to talk about. And it's kind of annoying. Like, I wish we would start winning so that, like, the everyday soap opera, when I log into ESPN, there isn't, like, seven different video clips of this guy's blast Aaron right, Rodgers, right, blast yeah. the Packers, well, the, yeah, it's, it, blast it's, the effort. And I, I was w- like, dude, shut the fuck up. It was, it was Bart Scott. Yeah. Was the was the one that I heard? I actually heard earlier today. I'm guessing he said it yesterday, the day before, um, and I heard it while I was working over there. Yeah, and and this was on in the background here, but uh, I heard him say that, it, and it was a it was a counterpoint to someone else's point of to your you know to your point where Aaron Rodgers has been around long. It's not like he's fresh out of college right. or you know one or two years experience. Like the dude's been playing for fucking 20 years is like you could catch a fucking you know, football right if right. jordan loves throwing you the football or a football machine's throwing you a football you should be able to catch a football right 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 so you are not in the bart scott no i'm not like, okay. I, i'm not anywhere close to that because you know what like if you ca- if you get to this level you were drafted to be in the nfl right your job is to read that playbook to know where you're supposed to be and be there on those plays when you're called. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers standing at camp. They had this thing where they were saying, this was what they were saying earlier, that Aaron Rodgers' presence just being there is going to snap these guys oh, into God. shape. Yeah, Like, no, it's not. They're going to have even more pressure with Aaron Rodgers sitting there watching them right. all day, try not to screw up right, so right. that they make the team. Right, right, for sure. They're on the team. They performed in the preseason when Jordan Love's throwing to him. Mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers throws a better ball. You're making mistakes on the field. That's yeah. not Aaron Rodgers' fault. That's not Aaron Rodgers not coming to camp. We're in week seven, and guys are still running the wrong routes. Yeah. That shouldn't be happening. Yeah, no, no. That's, you practice all goddamn week. That's, that's, that's yes, it's partly the players there, so but it's also partly So you go seven the- weeks of the NFL plus three weeks of the preseason plus camp, and you still haven't figured out where you're supposed to be right. on a play? It's that's not, on you. That's, that's not, not Aaron on Aaron Rodgers. That's not on Aaron Rodgers at all. No, and, and you know right. what? And Aaron came out today, you know, after, you know, Chris Canty said, shut the hell up. No one wants to hear it. Chris Canty, you ended up on a team with three Hall of Famers and won a Super Bowl because of it. Right. You ain't shit. <laughs> you're a, you're a bum and you're right. on the fucking you got a job at ESPN cuz you can talk. Right. You're telling him to shut up. Well, guess what? None of his teammates complained about it. None of his teammates came up to him and said, "Hey, I'm I'm bothered by what you had to say." And then when they he, you know, he tried to say this thing where he's saying when they screw up, 
He's like, he's not saying we screw up. He's putting them under the bus. No, Aaron has been very candid that he's missed throws. Right, right, right. He says, and he's made throws that he wishes he could have thrown a little better and, and done a better job with. He says, but we need to eliminate the mental mistakes. Right. And that is correct. He said simplifying and, it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and Matt LaFleur came out to his defense today, too, and said, hey, listen, sometimes the truth hurts. You're not going to love it. But right. guys are making a lot of mistakes. Right. They're not in places they're supposed to be. They're not where the ball is supposed to be. He's like, when you have a play that is called and it's an out play, mm-hmm. you better be where you are because okay. you've got milliseconds to get rid of that ball. Right. He has to get to that decision. Right. Find like, okay, this guy looks like he's going to be open. I'm going to throw him open. Right. If you don't go to that spot, it looks like Aaron threw a terrible fucking ball to nobody. Yeah. Right, absolutely. And he's frustrated because after, last week, towards those last few drives, there were a couple plays called that were just kind of head-scratching. Like, mm-hmm. we're on third and one, and we're doing these quick out passes. Right. And it, the guy isn't in the right place, but Aaron's kind of like, what the fuck are we doing? Right, yeah. Because why aren't we handing the ball off? Right. Aaron Jones gets four touches. Yeah, that was the that ball was off. a little that was uh, AJ a, a Dillon odd. gets yeah. like three. I mean Jones was involved in the passing game, but you've got two guys that like average like four to five, sometimes six yards of carry, and they're like, Okay, let's go away from that and then we're gonna go passing every down for the entire second half. Yeah. I you know, I think it's I don't I get th- it. Think, I think it's 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 funny to uh, Who's that creep? Uh that is Tom Brady Senior. All the way to the right? That was oh all the way With to the gold I, chain? Oh no, I have no idea. Yeah, who that, that was Tom Brady Senior. <laughs> no, Tom Brady Senior was hi- the hat. highlighted and showed. He was wearing the hat. Yeah. Um. But uh, no, you know the thing. The thing with Aaron Rodgers and and you know the media spin on on him and you know, God forbid he says he says one thing. Yeah. You know I I watched the 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 game with the Jets. Yeah. And after the win, and Aaron Rodgers, you, you, you know, oh he was. His vitriol that game was towards his line because yeah. Royce Newman shouldn't even suit up again. But he didn't. That guy sucks. He didn't. He didn't put it. The way that everybody is making it seem, it's making it seem as if Aaron Rodgers is being a complete jackass. Yeah, like jack saying off, like jerk. Oh well, I'm the king there. here, and I'm I'm perfect every right. time I go out there, and you guys need to catch up. And I mean, and that's for, not what he's saying. Yeah, no, it's not what he's saying at all. I mean, for a guy who. You know, has been to X Y Z amount of NFC Championship games and and is who he is. Losing to a team like the Jets, and I understand. Yes, it's they're five. And, they're team. five. And they're yes, they're five and two, and they're different. But they're still they're young. They're a young team, very right. young. You don't. If you're an Aaron Rodgers, you you know you don't want to lose to that that team. But he didn't come down on his team like no. he was like I'm king shit. I'm this. He's like no. Maybe we need to simplify things a little bit more. Right. Maybe we need to if guys you know, are struggling look at this and, with routes and things like that. Simplify right. it. And and that that was part of what irritated me with with what I think with what Bart Scott had had said about him, which you know he alluded to that it's your job to kind of help coach up your teammates and things like that. Like, no, it's not. It's not no. really his job to help coach up the teammates. You want that out of a leader. Yeah. And and I'm sure, and, he does. and I can't he imagine that he doesn't. These guys. You know, I think just by default, by by nature, yeah. him and in that position as a leader, if he sees someone screwing up, he's gonna be like, "Dude, pick that, pick your shit up and and, and do this or whatever." Like, well, because he doesn't do it like Tom Brady does. You catch Tom Brady on the sideline, and he's like screaming his head off at players. Well, they were and flipping they, out about you know, that. They, flip they were out flipping about out that. about that too. But it's like, oh, well, which one do you want? Like you. What are you supposed to be doing? Is he supposed to get into a huddle and pull everyone's pants down and start jerking them off? Like, right. is that what we're supposed to be doing? Mm-hmm. I, what I want to know is, is that all these tough former NFL players, these tough guys, you know, the, the Bart Scotts, the Chris Canties, you know, the, um, what's his name? Uh, Ryan, uh, he used to play for the Steelers. He's in that fucking Ryan show Clark. too. Ryan Clark. These guys were all tough guys. Why is it their fucking takes are so fucking soft? Like, Aaron's supposed to be coddling these guys. Right. Oh, you gotta be nice to these young guys. No, you don't use to fucking hang these guys up by their jocks on the fucking locker if they fucked up before. Right, right. And now all of a sudden we've gotta pat their bottoms and tell them they're special? I don't believe I, I don't for understand. one second. Like, 
we're so fucking soft as a society. Well, it's getting ridiculous. Yes, we are. I don't think for a second, though. Oh, he yelled. Tom Brady out the, yelled. Out of the three of them that, that you mentioned, I don't think Ryan Clark truly believes. And I don't even think Bart Scott truly believes that either. You yeah. know, I think it's just, you know. I'm on TV and this I'm on is what TV. They gave they're me. paying me. This is what I got to yeah. work with. I got to say something to be funny or I got to say something to get to, clicks. You know, um, but let's uh, moving over to Tom Brady again, real quick before we hit the commercial break. Um, you had told me as you walked in the house, and then I found the report here. Um, the report is Giselle Bunchin. I can never, I never been able to pronounce her name. Yeah. Uh, tells Tom Brady to retire or she's, quote, gone for good. And the article says Buccaneers quarterback Tom Brady reportedly has received an ultimatum. According to U.S. Weekly, Brady's wife, Giselle, has informed him that he either, quote, leaves football to spend time for family or she is gone for good. It's not specified whether he must leave now or next month or after the current year ends. Brady did recently say more than once that he won't be tiring, retiring during the 2022 season. But based on the report, she presumably wants it to happen sooner rather than later. I say this as a as a man that's gone through divorce, yeah, uh, with children, and I don't. I, I never. I never wish. I don't wish that on anyone. You no. know, um, some divorces are amicable, and you know things like that. Some are not. I'll leave. <laughs> We're in a good spot now, so I, I no jokes make you know about mine. But um, I don't wish that on anybody. No. What irritates me about about this situation is not so much what's happening here. That's Tom. That's Tom and Giselle's business. Yeah. What I don't like is the football fan, whether you're a member of a particular mafia or whether you're just anti Brady. Kind of ha ha, you know. Nelson from The Simpsons. Yeah. Ha ha, whatever. Pete you sh- Davidson on you line know. one, right? Hilarious. Like, you know, you know, making making light of it or, or whatever, all because the dude beat the shit out of your football team and mine, <laughs> literally for and every team. Yeah. Like the only team he struggled with was the New York Giants. Right. Right. You know, so I, 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 I bring this up to, you know, acknowledge that you, you know, you mentioned that earlier, but uh, to kind of, to kind of, to kind of say to the, yeah, they're, they're not very good. Um, wow, he just did the Ray Lewis dance. He really did. So disrespectful. Yeah. Uh, but look at this fucking lineman. <laughs> he just let him go. He legit, just hightailed it the other way. Oh, poor Lamar Jackson. Think he's gonna be a Baltimore Raven next year? I don't know, man. I I feel a lot like Aaron Judge. Oh, if Lord. he would have, if he would have, if he was gonna resign, he would have by now. Because I'm sure that the Ravens have backed up the Brinks truck for him. And he has probably said, no, nah, I'm going to see what else my options. Because he's going to get paid no matter where oh, he goes. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. And I said the same thing about Judge. Like, Judge is going to have plenty of suitors. Mm-hmm. If he wants to get out of this situation. And I, I had a feeling once the arbitration thing kicked in with Judge that he was gone. Because... They tried to lowball him for the arbitration after all he's done in these last few years. It's not like he just, you know, had an amazing season this year. He's right. been really good his yeah. whole entire career. Yeah, there. he's progressed. I'm a Yankees and fan. I watch it. He uh gets lowballed in the arbitration and it's finally a, like a, a big sigh and like, "Fine, we'll pay you the minimum of what we're supposed to pay you." And then they go and they offer him like a big contract after that and they turn it down. Mhm. He's gone. Like, I think the same thing with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson should have got paid after he was MVP. Right. Yes. Like, you don't get your MVP and say, all right, well, let's see how you perform the next two years. Right. He comes out and he performs at an MVP level last year, too. And he was the only reason you guys were actually legitimate last year. Right. Right. Is Lamar Jackson. Right. And you still go through the summer. And you have time to work out a deal and you still can't? Right. There's a max that he's going to get paid and you're not willing to pay it to him. Someone else is going to. And you're going to lose your franchise quarterback. And franchise quarterback is the building block of a successful team. If you don't have one, you ain't going anywhere. Right, right. You may have a good record. You may move up the standings. You may even get a playoff game. 
But after that, if you don't have the elite quarterback going into those divisional rounds and championship games mm-hmm. and Super Bowls, you forget about it. Right, right. The Rams had great defenses all these years. Didn't fucking matter until they added Matthew Stafford. Right. The Cincinnati Bengals have an elite quarterback. The Buffalo Bills have an elite quarterback. Right. Kansas City Chiefs have an elite quarterback. Right. The 49ers get exposed. They get through their one game in the playoffs, and then Jimmy G kicks in, and they get their ass handed to him. Right. He can only get them so far. A mediocre quarterback is only going to get you so far. Right. If you have an elite quarterback, you have a chance to win a Super right. Bowl. So here's where here's where so I, Lamar is going to be gone. Here's where I land on on, on that because I'm not a hundred percent. I like Zach Wilson. Yeah, I like him. I genuinely like him. I want him to be great. I don't know if he I one will be or two will not be help will be healthy enough to see because he's had his string of injuries in two years already. Um, I, I see bits and pieces of it. Although in this, in this streak that they, that the jets are on now, um, they've kind of taken the ball out of Zach Wilson's hands, rightfully so putting it in Brees Hall's hands, but now yeah. you don't have Brees Hall. So what can Zach Wilson do? We'll I, I find think out. That, I think he's going to be okay. I think to be a good quarterback, you have to have those, you have to fall. You have to struggle. Aaron Rodgers didn't come out his first season guns blazing to go to the playoffs. So they didn't play very well. Right. He didn't play very well. Right. Peyton Manning sucked his first season. Yep. You know, uh, Zach Wilson hasn't had a season. Like, That's he's been injured a lot. very fair point. And they've been unlucky injuries. Right. Like, last year's injury, you know, he, he went and he should have slid. That's mm-hmm. a rookie mistake. He got injured. Yep. This year, he was just running to the sideline, doing what he's supposed to do, right. and his knee gives out on him. Right. Again, that turf conversation, he's on that shitty turf. That is that is It's a big that is contribution, true. I think, to these guys getting injured. But I, I think once Zach gets – I think they're being smart because if you try to put too much too soon on a guy like that and you don't have the personnel around you yet, that's when you start to fail. That, you know, That's it, when you get these guys beat up. That's when their top confidence gets shot. But the way the Jets are building it and the way they're doing it is correct. They're building a defense. Defense wins championships. Yes. You still need an elite quarterback. But if you have an elite quarterback and your defense is like Swiss cheese, a la Green Bay for about seven years after they won the Super Bowl. Right, right. Those guys were putting up record numbers on offense, but they were also giving up record numbers on, on defense. Right. So it was a coin flip on what was going to happen. You get a defense that can put a little bit of slow to you, right. and your defense sucks, you lost. Right. So the Jets are building that defense. They're building a big line because they want to have a line that's going to protect him. Mm-hmm. And then you've got your running game. So now your running game takes the pressure off the quarterback. Now you got to start getting those receivers and who is going to be the guys that step up and, right. and are going to be – the key receivers that Zach Wilson can throw to. Right. And so if Zach Wilson's staying upright and Zach Wilson's got time back there and Zach Wilson's got a running game he can lean on, Zach Wilson will progress. Yeah. Uh, and he may not be an elite guy. Like, he's not going to be a Josh Allen or he's not going to be a Patrick Mahomes because those are once-in-a-lifetime guys. Right, right, right. But he could be a very good quarterback. Right. And... I think time will tell with him. I but, think it's too early to say it, yes, whether he is or won't be. It is. But that said, if Lamar does leave, <laughs> Larry David wanted him on the Jets, right? Yeah. You know, I'm just saying, like... I mean, listen, if you Zach have the Wilson opportunity, may be good, but if you're going to get an opportunity to get an MVP in his prime, you're going to take the MVP in his yeah, prime. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's so kind of... If, if, if I forgot the Sean Jackson, I forgot the Sean Jackson was back. Yeah, he did a sign. He's going to be good for his one deep ball, catch a touchdown, and then he'll just disappear from the offense, and then he'll get released. <laughs> like he does every fucking year. Yep, yep. Absolutely. All right, well, this is about it. This is a good time to take a pause really quickly, let the, let the commercials hit. And when we come back, we will have uh, not-so-breaking news, because by the time you hear this, you'll have already heard of it. <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyways. This is listen in the podcast or the JC Money Show on the Gear Radio Network. Stick around, bro. All 
All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Huh? He said Mike McDonald. I was like, Tom Brady. Throwing his pebble on the ground. You don't know him, but he's your brother. (laughs) Anyways, uh, not so breaking news, because by the time you hear this, It'll be out, and I'm sure everybody and their social media grandmothers will have said something. But, Brandon, uh, coming through the news wire here, uh, top Twitter executives fired as Elon Musk takeover officially begins. <laughs> Musk's $44 billion deal to acquire the social media company closed as we were recording. It closed oh. officially. Elon Musk officially takes control of Twitter. For forty-four uh, billion dollars, as oh, one I'd be of his firing everybody too, if I had to spend as, that much on that company. As one of his first moves, he fired several top Twitter executives, according to three people familiar with the matter, who spoke on the condition of anim- anonymity to discuss sensitive matters. One of those confirmed the deal. The deal had closed. Um, it, <laughs> I know. You know, I just wonder if we're going to get more titties or less titties in their feed. Because I was away from Twitter for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and then you alerted me to the fact that I'm liking all these uh, different naked women and I'm like following all these people. I'm like, bro, I don't even have Twitter. I deleted it off my phone. I was like, the only time I see anything from Twitter is when somebody sends me a thing and then I open it in a browser to look at it. But then as soon as I scroll down to look more at comments, it tells me to log in or sign up. And I'm like, well, I saw what I needed to see. And yeah, I just yeah. deleted it. And then I said, you tell me this. So I said, all right, let me log in. I log in and I'm like, holy porn everywhere. <laughs> everywhere I look, I'm scrolling through. I'm like, Packers news, political news, comedy, porn, comedy, porn, 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 mom, mom, porn, kill, mom, news, porn. I'm like, what the fuck is yeah, going dude, on? Yeah, dude, it was dude. crazy. It was show because it kept showing up on my feed, and I and I, I mean, I'm not on, complaining when I'm scrolling. I'm like, man, well, yeah, but then, everywhere. Yes, but but <laughs> it, it was it was a little much. Yeah, like, oh yeah. Like I like I had seen it, and it's like okay. Well, the weird thing is, is like you can see that I liked all these things, but when I like logged into my thing, it doesn't tell me what I've liked or done anything. Right. All I can do is like go through my followers, and I'm like. Yeah, I don't follow these people. Yeah. So what what did it for me was when I I had noticed more of it. It was like three or four or five like in a row where it yeah. said you like this, and I'm like, I don't think he's on social media right <laughs> no. now. The only thing and I have is Instagram. So I it's I brought the same up thing. If you look at my phone, I've just got Instagram. I didn't even log into LinkedIn since I got this phone. It's there because <laughs> yeah, it yeah. clouded over. Yeah. But I never opened it because. I would always get that alert that like somebody posted something or here's your daily digest and I'd always have to just open just to clear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I don't have to open it. I'm like, it's kind of great actually. I don't have to fucking even look at that app anymore. Yeah, yeah. I um but I saw it I saw it was like four <laughs> or five of them in a row and I was it, so I clicked on your profile yeah. and over when you bring up the profile it'll say, you know, it'll have your like normal timeline. Yeah. And then it'll click the next item over is both your tweets and replies that you yeah. did. And then next after that is media, any like videos or pictures yeah. you post. And then after that is it says likes and that will show you oh. what, you know, tweets you oh. physically actually oh. like. And none of the none <laughs> of the porn ones were there. So I'm like, what the hell is this? What is going on? That's when I let you know. Yeah. Um I if if I if I've been reading correctly with uh with all of the concerns that you know, liberal Joes have with uh, with Elon Musk purchasing Twitter. I think they're afraid that um, it's going to be Cucksville, USA. Yeah, pretty much. It's going to be Cuba, Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's going to be yeah. Truth Social, but on Twitter, like it was in 2016 or 17. Yeah, and I think that's what their big heartburn is. And I think Elon Musk loves the trolls so much that I think he he. It almost seems like he loves to let them think whatever the hell they want to think, even if yeah. he doesn't give a shit. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, it doesn't matter. The fucking world's full of crazy people, and yes. they're always going to have some platform. And if you start banning all these people from different things from saying shit, like, they're just going to find a new place to say that shit, and you're going to lose all the money and right. revenue. Like, 
let them fucking say whatever you want on Twitter. I don't give a shit. Like, yeah. I, I'm past the point of giving a shit what people have to say. Like, yes. People are just fucking stupid. They got nothing like better to do than, you know, retweet something their weird fucking uncle, you know, tweeted them in, in, yeah. in, the, in the family text. Yeah, yeah, in the family text. Where, where they're all like... Could have just fucking opened your window and shouted down to him in the uh, adjacent trailer that you all lived in. <laughs> like, hey, look what I saw about Joe Biden. <laughs> Heard he's a lizard person. <laughs> he pulled back his mask and he's a lizard. <laughs> like, okay, cool. But all these people that, like, it's the left is too mad that he took it over and the right is too happy. Right, right, right. And I think that it just should just, they all should fuck off. Right. I, I, I think did, they should all go into a fucking island and kill each other. Yeah. And then like the last one left gets to like get a fucking pencil. Yeah. With an eraser that it so they could that stick I, in their eyes. I survived the, I survived the great stupid fight. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Like I'm just, I'm over all that shit. That's why I got off of social media. Yeah. Cause I just can't deal with it. I, I, like, I it's took a so break. much easier with Instagram because it's pictures, and if they tw- like write a bunch of shit under it, you got to expand it and hit more. Right. So you can tell by the first three lines of whatever what someone wanted to write there that you can go, nope, not looking at that. Just keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, all I, I use it for. I did. I did a small social media break. It was quite liberating. Um, oh, it's during, been great. During the end of since the, May. During the end of the sun. Yeah, I know. I, I couldn't do it that long. I did it for a year that one time. Um, but I, I am, I am not using social media as much. I'm still looking at things, but I'm not retweeting, sharing, like yeah. the 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 news or whatever. And I've really found my way to filter out the dumb shit. Yeah. Um. So it doesn't. It, so it's not as prevalent on my feed anymore. I will say that I I avoided around this time though, because it's election season, and oh, you know the, the midterms are the I, most. I've gone back in and like I I I had to log into Twitter to see one of the tweets you sent me. Yeah. Um. And I also had to change my password. So now it's stuck as a login. So I can go in now when you send me one of those, and then I'll just scroll through and just kind of. I'm getting so many fucking tweets from like Jim Jordan and Ted Cruz <laughs> and every fucking you know conservative cuck that I have no fucking interest in doing. I was like, so someone fucked my algorithm while I was gone. Yeah, probably because I don't see half the shit I used to see. Well, I wonder. And now I see a bunch of shit that I never saw. I wonder if it had anything to do with that hack with all the porno thing because yeah. technically the people that would willingly go and like all that shit and do all that shit on Twitter. <laughs> Are the ones that are <laughs> following Cruz. the Ted Cruz's of the world and everything like that. So Ted Cruz watches porn just like me you on nine eleven. Do you see? Do you see? Did you see Yankees fan? Oh yeah, it was great on, on Ted Cruz. The one time I liked Yankee fans. <laughs> it's the, you remember when he called your wife ugly? <laughs> Get the fuck out of New York, you fucking piece of shit. And he's like, hey, hey, here's my orange shirt with vest. Hey. <laughs> oh, Lord. He's he, the most spineless dickhead I've ever He really seen. is. I, I, I will say I can't wait till election uh, until election uh, day comes and goes. And then maybe Jim Jordan will get off of Twitter. Because every time I log in, there's like 11 tweets from Jim Jordan on my fucking thing saying, you know, well, this happened in Joe Biden's America. Just a reminder, schools were shut down because of the liberal left. Hey, we have inflation because of the left. Hey, gas prices were it used to be two bucks, now they're five. Hey, it's liberal. And I'm just like, dude, you just, let's look at your fucking record. Just block, the, just block that. Idea. I have, and it keeps coming back. Oh, Lord. Like, I've hit mute, and then it's like, all of a sudden, here he is again. Uh, you may have to go to his profile physically and block it. Might, him. yeah, because it's it's fucking annoying. So I just remind him that he hasn't done shit in Congress every time I see one of his tweets. Yeah, just with a link to you know the Senate with what bills that they've introduced and co-sponsored, <laughs> and all of them are all horseshit bills. The he's introduced twelve times and all twelve times has failed. The Welfare Reform Act and upward mobility, and it's failed every single time. He has done 
absolutely nothing. He has 0.0 bills passed. Uh, but yet yeah. he's on every fucking camera and every fucking press conference all around. And it's like, hey, guy, what are you doing? <laughs> you don't do shit. Right. You know, you right. walk around without a fucking suit jacket all the time. Right, right, right. <laughs> Learn how to fucking dress, dude. He's... And also, you covered a fucking sex scandal. Right. In fucking Ohio State. Yeah, 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 you're that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah he doesn't want yeah. to talk about that. Yeah, I remember that. I forgot about that. Right, old, which is uh, what he's, which is, I'm sure, what he was hoping. Old everybody Beavis down there in Florida, what? Matt Gates. Yeah, and his fucking. Oh god, problems fuck him, too. fuck him, and fuck the other weird yeah. old cucks that are, uh, that are MTG. That are there. Yeah, her too. Yeah, you know me. The pot- the, poten- the potential running mate for, <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, we'll yeah, we'll, we'll leave we'll leave the politics out of that, but but it's I just can't I just can't wait after hours. I just can't wait to not see those goddamn ads anymore. Yeah, and the fucking lawn signs. Yep. And yep. Fucking billboards, and I am gonna buy one of those. Uh, and wood- the eight million fucking emails I've gotten to renew my I'm gonna- fucking <laughs> membership and donate. <laughs> Today is quadruple quadruple match. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I. Uh, I, I will say though, and and we'll I'll, I'll say this in closing, um, that p- that presidential lawn sign that you had uh, the last the Wu Tang one, one, I still have it. Totally fucking buying that for my house. Yeah, next presidential, <laughs> the presidential election. election. It's go. It's I'm buying Presidents it and it's going temporary. up there. Wu Tang is forever. Absolutely. And on that note, we will close it out here on the Listening Podcast or the JC Money Show. Thanks everybody for tuning in and listening to us. Thanks for listening to the sponsors again. Uh, the easiest way to support this and every podcast in the Gear Radio Network is if you click that subscribe button, you get the downloads automatically, and it helps us in a way that we appreciate very much. Brandon, my man, let's do this again very soon, shall we? See. All right. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you. So long, everybody. Good night now. Flavor Flavor. Yeah, boy. The band is back together. Yeah, boy. Hang on. One more thing before you go. Remember... Listen to our sponsors following this podcast, as that does help this podcast and this network out in a way that we appreciate very, very much. So if you could just ride it out 30 to 60 more seconds after this podcast is over, listen to those commercials, it would be doing us a very, very big solid. And again, we thank you. This has been a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. For more, log on to GearNetwork.com. Remember to see more National Football League action next week.